right, testing one, two. Mr. B.B. King, king, yes. king of the blues. <laughs> Thanks uh, for spending a few minutes with us. Thank you. You were just saying a few minutes ago that the last time you sat in a chair like this was when you were working for Mr. Landis and Blues Brothers 2000. 2000. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about what, what the experience was like, because you weren't used to doing movies. No, I've been in it about 13 or 14. It, this is the first time that I had uh, uh, more of a line, more lines than I've had before, but I've been in cameo appearances about 14 or 15 movies. We know that your heart and, and your talent is on the stage. How many years have you been performing the blues? Uh, professionally, 50 years. But uh, I think somewhere about 55 or 6 altogether. You mentioned in some of the research that I did, the blues are one of those venues that really does transcend race and religion, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Uh, I noticed uh, back in the 60s and later 70s, we, uh, and the music was bringing in, uh, bringing more people together, I believe, than a lot of the politicians was. I believe so. Mm -hmm. uh, do you enjoy it as much today as you did when you were first starting out? I think I enjoy it even more today because then it was just kind of like plaything. You go and you have fun and, you know, you don't think too much about it. But today, it's important to me, very important to me today because I feel there's a lot of young musicians paying attention to what we're doing, and some of them maybe look up to us for the things that we do, so that's important to me, so I want to do my best nightly. Uh, not that I didn't in the beginning, but now my head is sober. <laughs> do, you, do you feel any pressure about being the ambassador of that form of music in this country that we call the blues? No, I, I feel honored. I feel honored. Uh, for people to think of me along those lines makes me very happy. Mm -hmm. And you've influenced so many great musicians, not only with the blues, but also in the world of rock and roll. Eric Clapton, Juan, Jimi Hendrix, others. Uh, who, in, who influenced B.B. King? I don't think we've got enough time to, to <laughs> tell you. <laughs> uh, no, I've been influenced from the beginning by, well, I could name five that was most influential at that time, but since then, so the five would be Lonnie Johnson. Uh, Lonnie Johnson was a guy that recorded with uh, blues players, Re he recorded with uh, country players as well as jazz and gospel. Yes. I w wished I could be that same way, that link between jazz and blues, that link between uh, blues and gospel or whatever. But then there was a Texas uh, musician called um, Lemon Jefferson, and he was born blind, I was told, and everybody called him Blind Lemon. That was another one of my idols. And then there was a jazz guitarist from Oklahoma, I think, and his name was Charlie Christen. I was crazy about him, and a uh, friend of mine, he and I was inducted in service in 43, but I was uh, stationed in the States, and he was uh, uh, stationed in Europe, and he heard of a place called the Hot Club of France. So he went by there and he found this great, great guitarist called Django Reinhardt. And he brought me records on him because he knew I liked guitar. And I fell in love with him. And finally, another guy called T-Bone Walker. Mm -hmm. And T-Bone Walker was the first guy I ever heard play single string blues on electric guitar. And to me, that was the sweetest music this side of heaven. And from that time on, you name them, and I've been influenced by them. For many of our friends, they know you as the greatest uh, guitar player, one of the greatest in the world, but they don't know what BB stands for. Blues Boy. Okay. <laughs> How did you adopt that name? Well, I was a disc jockey starting in 49. From 49 through 55, I was with a radio station in Memphis, Tennessee, WDIA. I can say it, they don't come up here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, WDIA from 49 through 55, and um, they used to bill me as the boy from Bill Street, the blues boy. And people usually would abbreviate it, and instead of saying uh, blues boy, they'd just say BB. Did you ever think Lucille would become as famous as she has? No. That's beyond my wildest dream. You know, it's a funny thing. I never thought I would be a blues singer from the beginning. I wanted to be a gospel singer. I started out um, pattern after my pastor, which was um, 
uh, he was our pastor, and he played guitar and sang in the Church of God in Christ, um, which is my faith today, sanctified Church of God in Christ. And I wanted to be like him. So in my teen, uh, I used to get off work at uh, noon on the Saturdays and go to my little hometown of Indianola, Mississippi, sit on the street corners, sing and play, and usually I'd play gospel songs. And when people would ask me to play a song, the ones that requested gospel songs would praise me highly. They'd pat me all on the shoulders, you know, and say, boy, keep it up. You're going to be great one day. Yes. But they didn't put nothing in the hat. No, no. <laughs> you know, and, and some of our greatest musicians in this country, Patti LaBelle and yourself, all came with that bas gospel root. Yeah. But people that would ask me to sing and play a blues would always put something in the, in the hat and sometimes give me a beer or something. Okay. Tell us about Lucille. A lot of people know about her, but they don't know where the name came from. Well, I used to play a place in Arkansas, a little town about 45 miles northwest of Memphis. Uh, it's called Twist, Arkansas. And we used to play there quite often. And in winter, it got quite cold. So they used to take something that looked like a big garbage pail, half fill it with kerosene, set it in the middle of the dance floor, and they would light that fuel, and that's what we use for heat. And generally, people would dance around it, uh, never disturb it. But one night, two guys started to fight, and one knocked the other one over on this container. When he did, it spilled on the floor. When it spilled on the floor, it's already burning, so it looked like a river of fire, and everybody started to run for the front door, including B.B. King. Okay. But when I got on the outside, I realized then that I'd left my guitar inside. The building was a wooden building, burning rapidly. So as I started back to try to get my guitar, it was collapsing around me. Almost lost my life trying to save my guitar. But the next morning, we found that these two guys was fighting, was fighting about a lady that worked in the little nightclub. I never did meet her, but I learned that her name was Lucille. I named my guitar Lucille to remind me never to do a thing like that again. <laughs> and boy, did you make her famous. I never, uh, you know, I had no idea that it would become so famous that sometimes People want the guitar without B.B. King. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> no, I don't know about that. Oh, yeah. They want to see it. They want to see it. They want to uh, touch no, it. No, I was doing a commercial for a Japanese company, and uh, I think it was called Max L. Mm -hmm. And when they came, uh, that I was up in uh, Nevada, up in Reno, Nevada. So when they came that day to get the guitar, I thought they was getting me and the guitar, and they called me as if they was calling for my daughter and says, Mr. King, is Lucille ready? <laughs> I said, don't I go? They said, no, we don't want you. We want your guitar. <laughs> One last question. Uh, been in show business well over 50 years. Uh, what, what's one thrill stand out above the rest? Uh, meeting the Pope. I met the Pope about a year ago. And um, before that, I, I, met, I have met two uh, sitting presidents while in office. Who were they? Uh, President Bush and President uh, Clinton. Uh, of course, I've met three, but uh, President Ford was, he and I was. I um, uh, hope you weren't golf buddies. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, I don't know my right hand from my left. <laughs> But uh, President Ford and I both was uh, honored at, the, at Yale uh, at the same time. Um, we both got an honorary doctorate from Yale. Uh, but um, meeting the presidents, and I think meeting the Pope was the most. I gave him a guitar as well. Oh, I bet he was thrilled. He seemed to be. He seemed to be. I was so thrilled at getting a chance to meet him. He was a remarkable man. Uh, think about a person that had more than a billion followers. You know, you, he's a powerful man. He's number one, I would think. I th ratings. I think so. I think so. Yeah. I, I was really happy to meet him. You are the king of the blues, and you are one great ambassador for that music. Thank you, sir. And thanks for spending some time with us, TV. My pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Before Mr. McCreary comes on, can you just hold us and do one favor of us and say, I'm B.B. King. You're watching Special Edition. We'll be right back after these messages. Okay. Thanks a lot. And Mr. McCreary, we want to Tell me when you're ready. Tell me when you're ready. Okay. Uh, Hi, I'm B.B. King. I'm the guy that plays the guitar called Lucille, and you're watching Special Edition. Stay tuned. We'll be right back in a few moments. <laughs> Shut up, Lucille. Shut up, right, right. Shut up, right. Shut up. Hey, hey.